Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am thrilled to welcome Megan Strohacker with Pure Tranquility Massage Therapy, a fellow massage therapist in the state of Ohio. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So I am, in fact, from Ohio. I grew up in Brunswick. Are you familiar with that? I am. Yeah, not too far from you, I don't think. And I lived, for, I lived for a while in Middleburg Heights. I went to Baldwin Wallace College. It was a college at the time. I don't know about this whole university thing they got going down the street. <laughs> but uh, you, you're, you're in that area. I am. Middleburg Heights is right down the road. Amazing. Uh, I hope Ohio is, is uh, still holding on okay. We are. Everything's good there. I, I'm from a very big family, but nobody's really left in Ohio. We all fled. <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do sometimes miss it though. But so, okay, so you're, you're here, part of my 50 Massage Therapists, 50 States podcast series. But if you could start with, with a little origin story about how you came to massage therapy to begin with, that would be a great jumping point. Sure. So I started with massage therapy, I have to say at a very young age, when I was just a child, I would work on my grandpa's feet. He always asked me to tickle his feet and rub his feet. And he would always tell me you have a gift. And I didn't understand what that meant at the time. But then as I got older, I started realizing that I did have a gift. I would work on family members and then friends and then I finally decided to pursue massage therapy um, when I was about 19. Wow. And you've just been at it ever since? Been at it, at it ever since. That's amazing. So what can you tell us about becoming a massage therapist in Ohio? In the state of Ohio, there's several requirements. You have to have a either a diploma from high school or your GED. And then you enter into a massage therapy program. It has to be an accredited school. And the requirements for the state is that you have to have 750 hours. Okay. Okay. And then after you complete your 750 hours, then you go on to take your MBLEX. And then you can apply for your state licensure. Mm-hmm. And it's just the MBLEX, there's no other practical exam. It's Right now, it's the MBLEX. When yeah. I took it, it was just a state board exam, but that okay. was about 18 years ago. Okay. <laughs> so now it's gone to the MBLEX. Yeah, like a lot of other states. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. I've been, I've been talking to other therapists, obviously, as part of the series and trying to, to gauge whether people think a, a national standard is likely. And it seems... The consensus so far seems to be like that might be a good idea, but good luck ever trying to get it to to happen to have I think it would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be neat to have some sort of unifying body say, like, this is the number of hours, this is the 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 course of say I just feel like it would elevate the profession, but the logistics of pulling it off seem very tricky. I agree. Yeah. So what's the state of your state, my home state? Um, right now we have our stay at home order Yep. and they are supposed to gradually starting May 1st, start lifting that. So, oh, so May 1st is currently what they're looking at. And do you yes. feel like is massage going to be one of the first back to work or are they still maybe changed that date or. We haven't heard exactly when we will be allowed to work again. Um, you know, there's the different phases. There's three phases that they're talking about and. Some people are saying that we probably won't be working again until phase three, just because of the close proximity in which we're working with our clients. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's going to depend on everybody's individual situation. You know, for me, for instance, I'm just working one-on-one. -on -one. I only have one client in here at one time. Yeah. So I think it's a little That's bit different. Practices too, yeah. Yeah. But it's like, are they going to make blanket statements about an entire profession? Ignoring the nuances of it's a much different thing for uh, for one of the big chains to operate where they have lots of people in and out and a bigger staff and versus a one on one. I know 
I know one of the biggest concerns they're saying, you know, they're highly recommended, re- recommending wearing a face mask. And people in different groups that I'm in are talking about how are we to get the requirements as far as you know, making sure we're sanitizing properly and wearing the masks. How are we supposed to get those when there is a shortage? Right. And and do you is is the suggestion that it's supposed to be an N95, like the the top grade level mask, or is any mask we okay? Haven't, or? We haven't heard anything from the actual state board. Uh, uh, what I'm going on is based off just a different massage groups that I'm part of, okay. uh, with different people talking about what we plan to do moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sounds like maybe just the cloth masks and then some people, you know, taking extra precautions as far as their sanitation methods. And that's just during this reintroduction while the, the virus is still present. There's no right. indication that the the thought is that massage therapists will start wearing masks now. I hope not. Yeah. It does sort of, yeah. I'm wondering, do you have any thoughts about how you feel like the, this current crisis is going to change the industry as a whole? I honestly feel as though it's going to make us boom. I think that with all these people having been, you know, quarantined for the last month, yeah. They're really realizing how much they need that self-care and how much touch is important to them. Yeah. And I, I do a lot with pain management. So I know I've had a lot of clients who have been having a lot of trouble mm-hmm. during this time. So I don't think that it will negatively affect my business. Um, I think it'll be just the opposite, to be honest. Oh, wow. Are you doing anything specific to reach out to your clients, to engage with them during this time? Or are you just... Are doing any online? I've seen some virtual appointments, though. That the idea of that confuses me. But um, anything like that that you're that you're working with? I haven't done any virtual appointments. What I have done is that I recorded a video that went out on both my Facebook and my Instagram page. Just some self care for you know, neck tension, neck, shoulders, scalp, and I posted that because the majority of people who were contacting me were telling me that they had headaches and stress. Mm. So I figured that's the least I could do to help them, you know, show them some techniques that they could use on themselves while they're home. So I have posted some of those videos and the people who have reached out to me directly, I have been in contact by phone or FaceTime to show them how to have somebody who they're at home with help them get out of the pain that they're in. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I I produced a little bit of content around how to work on someone that you're with, Mm -hmm. which I hope is helpful to people. It's, it's kind of one of the questions we always, yeah. (laughs) One of the questions we always get is like, can you teach my partner to give me a better back rub? And (laughs) yeah, yes, I could do that actually. (laughs) And now, now it's probably more important than ever. And self-care and self-massage, anything we can do to, to make it through. So while I, while I have you here, I always like to ask this of, of therapists who, who have had a long career. What, what would you tell us about longevity and avoiding burnout? Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, I am a big fan of always learning. I constantly like to learn new things. And even though the state of Ohio actually does not require any continuing education hours for our license, I still, I do a ton because I I just like to learn. So anything that I can do to save my hands, Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of cupping. Cool. I do cupping. I just learned how to do taping. Neat. And, you know, just using different techniques. um, I always like a challenge. So... That's why I said I, I like to learn. So once I get complacent, I have to learn something new. Yeah, that's a great way, great way to approach it. That's interesting. I forgot to ask that earlier about how Ohio does not have a specific continuing education requirement. No. Yeah. But do you find that most of your peers in the state kind of approach it the same way you do? People end up getting the 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 CE anyway. I would say probably 50-50. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess what it kind of could fall by the wayside. I could see that. I know a lot of people in my state yeah. who, who tend to wait till the last minute. 
<laughs> and if that last minute never showed up, I guess they might start to wait forever. So yeah, I could see how requiring it does make a, a certain difference, but sure. Well, thanks so much for being here to, to tell us a little bit about massage therapy in Ohio and talking about You're the welcome. current situation and your ideas there. Okay, now we're going to jump over to part two of Ohio because I was chatting with someone online and got some new perspectives about some nuances in my home state. So I wanted to loop that into this podcast episode and we're gonna go there now. Okay, welcome to part two of my Ohio interview, part of my 50 States series. Welcome to Kathleen Goggin from Corporate Oasis Massage. Did I say that right? I, yes, you did. Yes, I did. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Because Thank I'm, you. Thanks maybe for it's having be, me. Because I'm from Ohio, I just felt like I, I had to talk to more people there. <laughs> <laughs> what a great place. O-H. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> O-H-I-O. That's right. So, but I, what, so I had, I'd seen some comments where we, we chatted online about some of the nuances, maybe some of the loopholes around massage therapy in Ohio. And I just wanted that to become part of the conversation. But I talked to, to Megan at Pure Tranquility, who is not too far from where you are. And she told me about how you have to go to an accredited school and it's 750 hours and people take the MBLEX there. So that's sort of like, the basics of becoming a proper licensed massage therapist. But I would love for you to chat about sort of that other side of things that, that's, that you seem to see happening a lot there. There are a lot of, we have quite a few thousand licensed massage therapists, but other than that, there's relaxation massage, they might call themselves massage uh, practitioners, ethical massage practitioners. And there are actually some schools that put them through, I think about four months of training to learn relaxation massage or Swedish massage. However, that is not licensed and no one even has to go through that schooling to do massage. They can hang up a shingle with absolutely no training, no experience in massage and say massage. And they can give relaxation massages. The only thing or requirement is they're not allowed to call themselves therapist or use the word therapy in any way, shape or form. Okay. If someone comes in and says, oh, I have a headache or my muscles hurt from working out, legally they're not allowed to touch them. I see but I'm sure they do. How many people come to you for relaxation massage and as soon as they get on the table, this hurts and that hurts and the right. other thing hurts, right? Yeah, yeah. And, hmm. and the unfortunate thing with this is the public isn't aware of this. They assume they that any place they don't they have they an easy to, way to distinguish. No, no. I've been, I've been licensed over 18 years and I've been educating people about this and still people don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so I feel like I feel like you've pointed this out in Ohio, obviously, but this is probably more common in other places as well. This sort of this this type of practice that sort of operates slightly outside of uh, what I would call outside of the bounds of proper right. massage therapy. Yeah, I don't know about other states how they are. But I know in Cleveland, in Ohio, we have a huge, um, the sex trade, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Trafficking. Thank you. Human yeah. trafficking that comes through, they funnel it through these relaxation massage places. Mm. Now there are legit places and there are legit relaxation practitioners, but that's what's being used in the trafficking and it's yeah. really sad i have a client that that was happening where she went she never realized it until she saw it on the news get shut down it's a wow. relaxation massage place and she was going there as a legitimate customer and had been and really liked it the prices were cheaper and she was just getting relaxation massage and all of a sudden they were busted for um human trafficking. Wow. Yeah, that's scary stuff. Right. And they and they do them right in the middle of our neighborhoods. Yeah. 
And what, what, what do you see Ohio doing to sort of close this? It seems like they need to kind of just close off this whole relaxation avenue and just get everyone who's practicing any kind of massage to be licensed properly. Right. And they are working on that now. There's a House bill that's been introduced now. There was a Senate bill, but that's inactive now. They've gone to this House bill and trying to get it more of the um, towards the medical side. And they've been working on, and I think this is kind of tied in, I'm not quite sure how, but as far as CEs, because we, unbelievably, <laughs> They don't require CEs, especially since we are licensed through our state medical board, who also licenses our doctors. Okay. But Ohio was of the idea that the insurance requires continuing ed, so we don't need to do that. But as you and I both know, you can get the insurance at different levels, and the highest level, which is the most expensive, requires continuing ed most people don't do that yeah it is curious to me that some like to, to me it's like i never worry about getting continuing ed just because i'm curious and i want to keep learning and i'm always going to be seeking out stuff anyway but yeah. it seems like some therapists kind of rest on what they have or right right yeah i'm the same way i'm always going doing and sometimes I might go not go for a year or two, and then I'm taking a whole bunch at once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, quite, you know, it depends. You know, all our businesses have ebbs and flows. Yeah. But yeah, I always love, even if I'm not learning going someplace, there's all kinds of classes you can do online, and there, there's usually something locally that you can go to even for a few hours. Yeah, and like the the major professional organizations, like I, I'm in the ABMP, and they have a huge library of yeah. content that you can learn from. Right, they do, and they have a lot of free CEs. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay so well, thank you for shedding some light on that situation. Uh, I'll be curious to to see how it develops if they're able to close that loophole. Um, how are you, what are you doing with, with corporate Oasis during the shutdown? Uh, obviously you can't go out into any businesses. I just, just curious, like as a business owner, how you're sort of navigating. Well, um, I'm starting to put some things online just to show clients some things to do and, um, starting to put it out there as far as working with clients over zoom or some other video conferencing thing mm -hmm. where we can have like the telehealth calls telehealth sessions so yeah. I can work with them with that because my main gist is not relaxation it's working it's therapy so yeah. I'll have people do a lot of resistive stuff or action motion while I'm doing massages so a lot of that stuff they can kind of I can show them how to do on their own yeah as they're watching me and I can watch what they're doing and all so that helps get them out of, it's not giving them hands on, but it's giving right. them a lot of work that they can get some relief to get them through. Oh, that's great. And then I also have an online business that I work to. Oh, cool. What, how do you feel like the, the crisis, this, this time away from body work and massage as a culture, what do you think it's going to look like when we can get back to it? Is it going to be boom times more popular than ever is everyone going to be really cautious about getting body work what what do you see it going that's um that's a curious question i wonder yeah. that myself sometimes <laughs> i mean i have people that are contacting me saying when can i come and see you i'm so tired i'm so hurt i'm so this i'm so that yeah. and some wanting me that's like well i won't tell anybody yeah i'm not doing that <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna do that my ethics tell me no i can't do that but um I think there's going to be on both sides, people being more cautious about sanitizing mm -hmm. and about being with somebody that's sick. So you're gonna see more um, in-depth immediate um, requirements of probably both sides. Have you been sick? Have, do you have a fever? And I can see well, maybe some therapists will be taking temperatures or hmm. you know, trying to find out what's going on, but you know, a lot of times people forget or 
they might need a massage so bad they might not tell you that they haven't been feeling well. Yeah, or so I mean, might... on a on a big level, they they might be fully asymptomatic. Right. With this right. virus, they might fully be a carrier, and no one will know. Right, and never get sick from it. Yeah. Right, and you can have therapists like that too. Yeah. And it feels a little weird, a little freaky to think of working with people with a, a mask and all gloved yes. up and everything like that. So I'm not really sure how that's all going to come out in the wash. Yeah. It might be, you know, kind of sanitizing and everything will get better, but maybe with the masks and everything, it'll be all full-fledged now and then gradually work themselves away. Yeah. Where, where's Ohio sit right now? Do you, do you have an, an end in sight or anything? Thoughts about that? Well, um, Governor DeWine, we were like one of the first states to close down. And actually, I think he was the first one a lot of states were following him. And now they're talking about the possibility of starting very slowly May 1st. Interesting. And they're working in conjunction with three or four other states. Yeah. Now, I know Michigan's a lot worse off than we are because they didn't take the precautions that our governor mm. But so it'll be... And a lot of massage therapists, and I think I'm on the side of that one. It's like, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. But I think we'll be more like phase three. They're saying phase one, two, and three. And I okay. think they're end up putting us in phase three anyway, because you can't be six feet away from someone. However, there's that argument. How do you feel about this? That argument between, well, chiropractors and physical therapists can work with their clients. Right. But they're not like right in each other's faces for an hour or more either. I, I mean, chiropractors to me, they work just as close as I do in my experience. And yeah, yeah. 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 So, so I don't know. Yeah. There's also the side where it's like, well, we, we all see people one-on-one -on -one. we're not gathering groups of people. So the risk of widespread is low, but I don't know. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, you never know what the other person on either side of the table has been exposed to yeah, or where they will go exposed you know right. how many people they will then interact with yeah right so a wait and see a very <laughs> very interesting time but it's a new and different time in our yeah. age <laughs> thanks so much for for chatting a little bit more about ohio i hope if you ever drive down 71 past brunswick you'll think of me my home yes school. i will <laughs> <laughs> and my son and his family are moving to medina right past you oh medina that's yeah uh, i still i dream of donuts from bueller's to this day ah there's a new one right on the square that's really good oh man they had a little the donut shop growing up i loved it there <laughs> nothing it's uh, something about like childhood you know like nothing will quite reach the level of bueller's donuts you also can't buy snyder of berlin potato chips here which drives me crazy because they're the best yep yep <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna wave goodbye and we're, i'm gonna stop the recording but we'll keep chatting and uh thanks okay. for being on the show thanks for having me thanks for having me